roof aerials. That's just, I've laid them all out. It's sort of a timeline of roof aerials. Um, I feel it's like one of those diagrams where you have that sort of ape that's like this and he sort of goes up to be a human. Um, right, so some cars will have a blank. That's bad if you've got one of those. That means you've got no GPS. That means you've got no... What else is... So the aerials, the air, roof aerials are up with GPS, which is looking at satellites up in the sky and giving you your sat nav satellite navigation. They are also for your mobile phone connectivity, I believe, which is GSM. Um, so they also do that. There's a, I think some of them may also do some radio or TV reception, but I'm not sure on that. Some of them are fitted to the rear windows and stuff. But if you look at, let's pick an aerial at random. That one's got two aerials. Depending on the number of plugs, you pretty much guess what how many functions it's got. So this is this was fitted to the Sport, the Disco Three, um, the L three two two. They have this aerial, and we've done a video on replacing that. And if you get problems with your navigation, often it's due to this. Um, an aerial has a very sad life. It sits on the top of your car, getting exposed to all heat and coldness extremes and stuff. And often they get a little bit battered on garage doors and other things. And when you're putting stuff on your roof, so... You get no love. If I was reincarnated, I would not want to come back as a roof aerial. But we digress. Right. Then there's been several designs of roof aerial. And they seem to sort of follow an evolutionary scale. This one we're gonna call the jelly mold one. Very smooth, very smooth. Now, one interesting thing, we'll go up to the cars and have a look. If you look at these, they all follow a similar sort of base footprint. And these sort of go, this is the front of the car and that's the back of the car. But on these actually, you'll find some of them round the other way, which is slightly annoying and you'll see why later. So, cause yeah, um, right. So they had this very jelly, very smooth. You could make that out of jelly. There you go. This one is, it's more shiny. We like shiny, but it's got this sort of raised ridge on it. Um, and that one's also used, and we're gonna have a look at which cars they're used on. Um, again, we seem to have two functions here. Um, the, bolt, the bolt pitches, they seem to have kept fairly similar across the range. So um, it may well be you can swap aerials around and get some improvement or What's the opposite of improvement? Degradation. I was going to say disimprovement. That's Dis not a word. Degradation, right. Now, they then started to get all a bit, we call this one Jaws. That looks proper like, proper like a shark's fin. That looks like, yeah. Proper aggressive. Proper aggressive. And it is very fin-like. Dorsal fin, is that what they call it? Yeah. Yes, look at that. All those Navy experience playing off the toilet there. Now, I was just saying a toilet. You know, this isn't purely just to make your car look like a shark. That's not the idea of these. It is because you do need to have a vertical antenna. Now, I don't know what this one's for. Someone, please, if you know, I'm going to guess that this is perhaps for the radio or TV or phone. I'm going to say the GS... I called them all there. Um, <laughs> I, think, I think the... Uh, I think the GSM one is going to be, the GPS one's going to be looking up more. So I, I don't think it's GPS, but so, and you'll notice that there's one at different planes at 90 degrees to each other. So this is all to do with, with aerial wizardry. So it's not just to look like a shark. It is to house a vertical aerial. Right. We haven't bothered taking this one apart. Now, this one seems to be used on most of the later models and it is, it's not quite as shark-like, is it? We haven't no. put a name for that one. Um, and some of these now come on, some of the newer models come with a camera in the back. Right, so why are we looking at all this? So we decided that on our Range Rover L405, our big Range Rover Vogue, we have an aerial that looks like this. And actually it was Craig. Craig's like, oh, I wanna replace it. Do you know if they're compatible? So we, we designed, um, we 3D printed it and then had them made and we designed a sort of snap-on aerial. So the idea is we're going to go out to the car and have a look and it's designed so that it goes over and just grips. It's got some little grips along the bottom edge here and if you get it right and you snap it on it and it clips over and it makes you look like you have got the later. Now unfortunately it won't improve your radio reception 
or GPS reception. But we did also check. Craig drove his car around for for a few months with our 3D printed one, and he tied it on and off. And he said it made no difference to any signals or reception. And to be fair, I don't think it's going to because. I think most of those are fairly transparent to plastic. So, right. So what we're trying to do is we are trying to, all this waffling aside, we are trying to make the lower profile aerial looky like. I know it's just a stick on cover, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a thing, isn't it? Right. It's an better. update. This was a better looky likey better. Right. Let's go out and have a look. Oh, on the way. Don't turn the camera off quite now. On the way, you'll notice that that is the same shape on my new Defender. Again, some of the Defender ones have a little lens at the back to look at you with a camera in. But so we are, so this clearly seems to be the sort of evolution of choice. Right. The best. Out we go, out we go. It's always raining. Right. So, Tyler has lined up our Range Rovers for you. So let's have a look at some areas. So, so this is the one which is sort of mounted back to front really although it doesn't look too bad does it but the others are mounted with the wider end at the yeah. back um so this nearly fits onto this one but it would be going backwards <laughs> so it doesn't really work we're gonna have to design another one that's like back to front because i think that would just look weird right yeah. So unless you've made the back of your car look like the front and then Yeah, and now it may be possible and, and I might try this or get tired of it. We might better go under the headlining, unbolt this one and swap it round. Right, shelter that microphone from the noise, Tyler. Right. Okay, let's go and look at the next one. Right. So this is our 2015 Ranger Sport L494. And that has got a different one. That's the old jaws there, isn't it? But obviously we can't, that isn't going to fit over there. Right, let's keep going Tyler, shelter the noise, shelter the noise. Right, this is the next one, have you left it unlocked? Yes. Right, hold on. Top tip. Top tip, right, this is what you've got to do for this one. And then you've got to manually put that down. And then stand on your teeth. Right, and this is what we're going to, come and join me Tyler. Come on, shelter the mic. Oh gosh, oh, right. oh my. So this now points this way. Now the idea is that this just clips on, right? Um, so here we go. Right, and that is it. And so there we go. So we, we might supply it with some silicon. We will supply it with some silicon as well so that you can put a bit of silicon just in case you're worried. But I'm, I'm pretty much going to guarantee that through car washes.